Let's begin today by looking at the Word of God. Peter said, and this was right after Passover, right when God poured out his Spirit for the first time. God said, it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. This is from Acts 2, verse 17. We know that the time of the outpouring has come. God is pouring out his spirit in dreams and visions. But who can receive dreams and visions from God? Well, let's look at what this scripture says. The first thing it says is that your sons and daughters will prophesy. This means that the gift of prophecy is for every person. A son and a daughter is a child of God. According to Romans 8, verses 6, we are all sons and daughters of God. This also refers to maturity. Sons and daughters are children. In 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it states, earnestly pursue love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. We know that prophesying is God's will. It, it says that it edifies and builds up the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 tells us what it means to be a child. It, tell, it shows us how to determine, are we a child? Or have we grown into some maturity? It says that if you are still envious, sowing discord or jealousy, if, or if you're unchanged by your decision to take Jesus as Lord, you are still a baby Christian. You are still just a newborn. You are not yet ready for anything more than prophecy. Once you begin growing in your walk with God, then you'll come to the place where you're receiving visions. A vision is something that is given to young men. Now remember, in God's word, often the word man or men means all of humanity. So this isn't only for the male race, it's for all of us. There is no difference in the spirit. God doesn't see male or female, black or white, slave or free. He only sees his children. So young men have some growth. They have fed their spirits by reading the word of God, by pursuing teachings on the word that has helped them to grow into adolescence. They're not children, but they're not mature either. In Daniel 4.13, it says, I saw a vision upon my bed. Guess what? Just because it happens at night doesn't mean it's a dream. A vision can happen anytime, anywhere. It can happen when you're wide awake as you just find yourself looking at something totally different than what's before your face. It can happen when you're meditating and have your eyes closed. It can happen at any time. It can even happen while you're asleep. We know that we can tell, we can tell when, a, when a vision is come upon us at night because there, it is 2020 vision. It is very crystal clear. It's something that stays with us. It's something God is speaking directly to us. It will be etched upon your soul. Now, God also sends dreams. These are not just typical dreams that will lead us and guide us. These are dreams that instruct mankind. It's not defined by the number of years you've been a Christian. Just because it says old men, does not mean a, a large number of years. You're considered old when you've matured in the ways of God. A mature Christian, it says in the word, will bear much fruit. It actually says tree. A tree is often a symbol of a man or a leader. So a mature Christian is a tree that bears much fruit. Well, where else do we hear about fruit in the Bible? We know that there are fruits of the Spirit. These fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit. By We will know a Christian is mature if they act in kindness, if they're self-controlled, if they're gentle. Somebody who's rough, and I was when I was younger, <laughs> boy, 
You could, I, I could irritate people faster than anything. But the Holy Spirit, he helps us grow and change. He brings us to a gentleness, a peacefulness, where we're much more patient with others. If you're wondering where you are in God's scale of maturity, go over these things with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, are there any that I need to work on? Now, we can receive dreams from many different places. We can receive dreams um, from God, from our own mind, from drugs, or even the enemy. Each one of these can be identified in different ways. Our mind is probably the hardest one to determine. Is this from God or is it from our own mind? When God sends us dreams, often he'll use things that we've seen earlier in the day, earlier in the week, things that are fresh in our memory, and he'll just kind of reorganize them to talk to us about our dreams. But then other times, our subconscious will be putting our worries or everything that we've done with the day, be putting it back in order, and it's just a dream. Another place that dreams can come from are drugs. Alcohol or food can actually affect the way you dream. They affect the body chemistry in our brain. Now, it doesn't mean that God can't overcome this, but if you've taken any kind of cough medicine, any kind of sleeping aid, any kind of food um, that caught, you know kind of gives you a restless night, and especially alcohol, these things may affect the dreams you have at night. The last two, God and the enemy, those are the two hardest to decide what dream, who the dream is from. The enemy loves to imitate God. He tries his best, but fortunately we have the Holy Spirit who guides us and leads us concerning our dreams. Only God can bring the true meaning of a dream where every piece has its place and everything makes sense. Only God can do that. With the enemy, there will always be a piece here or there that are out of effect. If you haven't interpreted the dream right, that'll also be true. But with the enemy, there are four big clues that this is an enemy dream and it's not from God. If there is a curse word used in your dream, if you actually hear a curse word, that dream is not from God. Because God tells us not to curse, not to have foul language. So he would never curse in our dream. If it's black and white only, if there's no, black, white, and shades of gray, that's not God either. God is full of cover, color. He's vivid. He created the rainbow as his promise. One of the hardest things to realize is that God does send us dreams with sexual components. Just because there's a sexual act doesn't mean it's not from God. The, dif the difference is lust. Lust comes from the enemy. That was part of the curse. You know, the lust of the eyes is evil. The lust of the after a body is evil. No, that's bad. So you have to ask yourself, is this dream from God or not? even if it has a sexual component. One of my most vivid dreams had a sexual component and I'm like, I threw it out because I'm like, there's no way that's from God. And a few weeks later, I was asking the Holy Spirit, I was like, man, it's been a long time to, since you spoke to me in a dream. You know, I really like one tonight. And he said, clearly, I brought you one. And he brought that one vividly back to me. And I went, oh, and guess what? It was a destiny dream. <laughs> so. Um, there's a difference between lust and sex. If it's just like a robotic act, there's no lust to it, that's okay. But if it's a lustful dream, if it invigorates your body in certain ways, then that's probably from the enemy. Okay, last one. I should have put a PG-13 rating on this, so sorry. <laughs> okay, the last one. If it leaves us feeling like there's no hope, you know, God brings correction, but sometimes those dreams are hard to hear, but there's always hope in, involved in that dream. So if it just makes us feel like we're a horrible person and we'll never get anywhere, well, that isn't from God. It's from the enemy. Why does God bring dreams? What is his purpose? There are so many. We will not limit God by saying that there, these are all of them because he is a big God. But the book of Job does give us some hints. There's a place where one of his friends, Elihu, I think, 
the one who spoke rightly about God, he was telling Job that then he, being God, opens the ears of men and seals their instructions in order to turn man from his deed, to conceal pride from men, from a man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. The first thing is he opens the ears of men to hear. Notice that I, I use this verse and I often ask the Lord to open the eyes of my understanding so that I receive dreams from him in the night. But then there's Job's friend gives five reasons that God may bring a dream to confirm and to instruct us or to seal instructions. So maybe we're, we're wondering, should I go this way? Should I go that way? You know, what should I do? Well, God will often confirm his will in a dream. To, and then another thing he does, he will turn us from a wrong path, turn a man from his deed. If we're going the wrong way, sometimes God will send us a dream and say, stop this. <laughs> you, know, you are heading off into danger. God will also send us a dream to, quote, conceal pride. The Hebrew word for conceal also means to cover. It means to keep a man out of pride, to, to get him away from the pride that he's in. When the Bible says that God will keep our soul back from the pit, that literally means to keep us out of hell. <laughs> so, so God sends a dream to put us back on a course correction because the way we're going is not a good way. And then finally, to keep us from perishing by the sword. This means to keep our life from ending shortly, short because we're going in the wrong direction. We might come under an attack that would remove us from this planet. Now, we know from... Joseph's, yeah, Joseph's trip in Egypt, that God also sends prophetic dreams about the future. But that is for another course. This is the end of our short message today on dreams. Shalom.